instead of being over there under the lights and in makeup and stuff, I just need to, I just need to vent a little bit. Hopefully I won't cry, but I am, I'm at the stick of fork in me, I'm done, kind of done. So I finally heard from Yuki South Western. And I got a very condescending letter about how they looked through my file and they found no issue with what had occurred and that they're not inclined to let me switch doctors and they are sorry if I, I was made to feel dismissed. And when I tell you the level of rage that took over my body, like I've been angry this like with them for a while now, but this is second level. So I called the um, risk manager back. That's who it came by. Office of the Vice President for Legal Affairs. And I said, um, first, before we get into this, I said, I apologize. I'm going to do my best to keep my level headed and um, professional. I said, but we need to start off this conversation about the wording in your letter. I wasn't made to feel dismissed. I was dismissed. And I said, I'm pretty sure that my record looks all wrapped up pretty with a pretty red bowl and it's sparkly and it's clean and it's fantastic. I said, but I can guarantee you, I didn't say it like that, that our conversations and what they said to me didn't make it into that. I said, so let's start. I said, let's start with 2021 or 2017. I said, when I was diagnosed with MG, my spinia gravis. I said, and then I started IVIG in November of 2021. I said, saw the neurologist the very next week who told me she was retiring. I said, then as she was retiring at the end of December, she basically told me that she had been misdi she had misdiagnosed me and had been mistreating me and I had chronic fatigue syndrome instead. I said, yep, what happened? The timeline of events for the testing and stuff absolutely did happen. Happen. I said, but the conversations aren't documented. And I said, let's start with doctor number one. I said, doctor number one said it's not neuromuscular. It's not even neurological. It's probably a rare disease and we don't deal with rare diseases. I said, that is almost a word for word verbatim quote. I said, and my husband was present for that one and he can back me up on that. I said, the second one, I said, the first issue is I've never met them. I said, the second issue is, is both conversations were done through the car. And I said, the first one was after he told me he had a family emergency. I said, so it was a really quick phone call and he basically said, nothing showed up on the test, you're fine. And I said, can we, I said, I was begging, can we do a muscle biopsy? Can we do genetic testing? And his literal words to me were, I wouldn't even know what to test for. I said, okay. So this year I sought out genetic counseling and I got a diagnosis of muscular dystrophy. And I said, so you tell me. You tell me. No, I said, you can't tell me that if I had been 165 pounds standing in front of both of those doctors, having the same damn um, symptoms and both tests came back negative, do you mean to tell me that they wouldn't have pushed to try to figure out what it was? I said, and if you can tell me that they wouldn't have pushed to tell me what, to figure out what it was, I said, then you have a bigger problem than me. I said, that's incompetence. I said, you guys are a teaching and research hospital. I said, you have, you're an MDA care center. You guys have two clinical trials for my specific disease going on right now. And I said, you mean to tell me that neither of your doctors thought to test me for muscular dystrophy? Are you telling me that I have every single solitary symptom of FSHD and they just weren't concerned about it? Not a big deal. Weren't going to do any further testing. I said, my whole goal with this 
It's not to file a lawsuit. I said, I just want the ability to switch doctors. I said, because the two that I've seen who are still on staff dismissed me. I said, I don't appreciate the gaslighting in your letter. And I said, I don't appreciate the gaslighting from your doctors. So, and I said, I don't even really want to come back to UT Southwestern. I said, but you're one of the two MBA care centers in the in Dallas, in Dallas. And I feel like I deserve the opportunity to see someone else. And she's like, but you don't have a diagnosis. I said, yes, I do. I do have a diagnosis. And I mentioned that when I call and made my complaint because I have a diagnosis. Oh, and guess what? It's neuromuscular, neuro, it's neurological, it's neuromuscular. It's the exact same things they said I didn't have. So again, you tell me, am I a victim of fat bias or are your doctors incompetent? Because it's one of the two. So she said, "Can have you sent in that test result? I was like, no. I said, because the only people I have to contact are those two doctors and I don't want to reach out to either of them. She said, unfortunately, you know, I don't have an email address or anything that you can send that result to. She said, but if you'll send it to one of them through my chart and tell them that it's for me, then I will get it and take it to the physician. What are they called? A physician leadership team of the Department of Neurology. So basically, it's probably the doctors that I saw. <laughs> when I tell you the amount of rage that overtook my body, I was like, again, I know this is not your fault, but please don't use that language going forward. I wasn't made to feel dismissed. I was dismissed. And you can't convince me otherwise, unless you're, unless they're standing to me face to face and would say, well, you know, you didn't really like, no, no. I've had the same exact symptoms since October of 2016. I said, this isn't just like I'm fat and have weakness. I said, we are talking about how I can't shower every day. We're talking about how I can't drive. We're talking about how just it's how difficult it is for me to just wash my hair. I said, and I've had these same symptoms now since October of 2016. So you tell me why no one thought to consider testing me for muscular dystrophy. You tell me that. You tell me that. She was nice. Like, she was nice. Like, she did her best. And then, again, I, she's just the representative, I know, but she's an RN. So surely she understands what's happening. And I said, you know, I just, I said, I don't want you to come back. I don't even really want to come back. I was like, but I deserve an appropriate level of care. And I said, the care I received from you is was abysmal. Three neuromuscular neurologists wrote me off. I was dismissed. Chronic fatigue, I've had zero of those symptoms. So, yeah, I got off the phone with her and Rob's like, I was in the bedroom with the door closed. Rob was at the kitchen table working. He's like, well, <laughs> I was like, sorry. He's like, no, I heard you. And I said, I was like, at this point, I don't even know, baby. I was like, I don't even know if I want to go back there. Like, it shouldn't be this hard to fight. So I saw my pain management doctor this morning and I just went on her. I was like, I'm so sorry. She's like, no, you just need someone to listen to. And I said, I need someone I trust to listen to. I said, because, you know, because we talked about the risotomy and I told her, you know, how it gave me relief, but I'm still having the irritation. And I said, you know, going forward, she said, if you want another one, it's like six months. I said, I was like, I don't know. I don't know what it like, what's causing it. Is it the weakness? Is it, you know, is it the muscular dystrophy? Is it the OPLL? Is it just nerve damage? I said, I don't know. And she's like, I don't, she's like, I don't think we need to distinguish them. She's like, we just need to treat the pain. And I said, you know, my doctor has already started the referrals. I, when I talked to him yesterday, he sat with us for 35 minutes. When I see him, I have a list. <laughs> I keep a running list on my phone of things I need to talk to him about. And I printed off the um, 
test results and I'd written down, you know, I need a referral for an audiologist, a pulmonologist, home health care so I can have a um, physical therapy and occupational therapy assessment. And he's like, what? He said, is this? I said, yeah. I said, I talked to the genetic counselor and she said, this is di this has diagnosed me. He's like, I don't even know what this is. I was like, join the club. <laughs> I said, join the club. I said, let me take my glasses off so you guys can see my face. I said, I said, it's not treatable. I said, it's not treatable. And, you know, the physical therapy and occupational therapy could be something that might help me regain, you know, some, some strength and some use of my arms. Every time I think about physical therapy, though, I just remember getting out of the pool that first time and calling Rob and sobbing because I could not get dressed. So I said, you know, I saw plastic surgeon on Monday because I told him about this. And he said, what did he say? And I said, you know, I said, he said Botox would probably make things worse. And I said, I asked him, I was like, you know, at what size, like what size would you feel comfortable giving me a breast reduction? And I said, he literally told me that it was too dangerous to go under anesthesia for a breast reduction, but he he asked me if I'd consider bi biatric surgery and he said oh. he said the issue is that medicine isn't what it used to be he said we used to be advocates for our patients which I've been saying over and over and over again he said but unfortunately you know now we just don't have the time and everybody wants to blame everything on your weight and I said there are two doctors in my entire existence who have never brought up my weight. I said, you're one and my rheumatologist, the other one. And now my pain, I, my pain management doctor, I, she's like, yeah, she's like, you're a person. I don't see your skin color, which I know that's a whole conversation, but she just means like she doesn't, she doesn't have personal bias as she's treating someone. And I can, like, I completely agree that that can be, doctors can be capable of that. And I said, you know, I've, I said, I've been trying to lose weight. I said, I've gained and lost the same 30 pounds. I said, you know, I'm having this issue where part of me is like, get the diagnosis, get the diagnosis, figure out what's going on, figure out what's going on. And I said, the other part of me is like, I don't give a flying fuck what I put in my mouth. And I said, fuck for the very first time in front of him. And I've been seeing him for like 12 years. And I said, I just don't, I just don't care. He's like, he's like, Misty, this is depressing. I said, yeah. I said in it, I said, it's hard to be fatalistic. I said, because it's the finality of it all. And I may post a video I made the other night at the kitchen table when Rob was going, just losing my shit, but it's the finality of it all, right? It took me seven years to figure out what was going on. And I told him, I was like, this whole entire time, I just wanted to be able to drive and take a shower every day. I said, that's it. That's all I've asked for is to drive and take a shower every day. And I said, I'm, I will probably never drive again. I said the last time I drove, I was, was sobbing by the time I got home because I was terrified that I was going to have an accident because I couldn't push in the pedals. I couldn't hold my arms up to grab the steering wheel, you know, and I was able to hold it at the bottom, but it was, you know, pushing in the brake. And if you live anywhere in the Dallas Fort Worth area, there is traffic anywhere, <laughs> anywhere. So I said, you know, it's the finality of it all. And just knowing that what I've said over and over again, today is my best day and I'm only 45. And I said, that's really hard for me to deal with. And I said, I'm trying to find the good in it. I'm trying to find ways to be grateful. And I know it's a privilege. This was very privileged. I'm privileged that Rob has a good job. I'm privileged that Rob has a job where he can, you know, have health insurance. We're privileged that we are able to afford the highest tier of insurance because I knew I would be going to doctors all the time. Who knew it would be for this? <laughs> I said, we're privileged in that insurance covered everything that's happened so far. I said, we're privileged in that. I said, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I said, I just, 
and this was before last night's phone call. Oh, you guys, it was all I could do not. I told Rob, I was like, I just want to eat whatever I want to. And he's like, you've been doing really well. And I was like, I know, I know, but I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. So finally, I ended up having prosciutto with Roxy and um, some snickerdoodle cookies from Aldi. Those, they have a, a almond flour keto kind of cookie. They're kind of like high key cookies. The one that I loved was strawberry cheesecake, but they haven't had that flavor in forever. So I woke up this morning and I told Rob, I was like, I don't even know that I want to go back to UT Southwestern. I said, maybe this is the universe telling me not to go back. I said, but on the flip side, I don't understand why it's such a big deal to transfer my care to someone else unless there's not anyone else. And if that's the issue, just tell me. So I got on the MDA website and was looking through things and I noticed that it said that MDA care centers have to have a social worker on site. So I called and spoke to a lovely lady and I was like, I told her kind of an abbreviated version of what's going on. She's like, I'm so sorry. I was like, I just... I said, I saw on the website that, you know, there should be a social worker. And she's like, yes, she said, there should be someone at an MDA care center who is the social worker that you can speak to. And I said, okay. I said, I just wanted to, I was hoping to get the information. She's like, I never know if it's updated or not. So I could give you a name and it could completely knock them. She's like, the best, you know, your best bet is to call. And I said, okay. So I t she said, both of these? I was like, yep, both of them. Both of them. So, um, I got off the phone with her and called UT Southwestern Neurology Clinic and asked to have a social worker call me back. And the person taking the call was like, for what? And I said, for advocacy. I said, because I'm trying to uh, change doctors and... I, um, I'm trying to change doctors and I'm, I'm having a hard time with that. So I called that and then I called Mansfield. Now that's a small center. She said it only had one doctor, but when I called them, uh, um, I, I just got a message. I had to leave a message. So maybe they'll call me back. Maybe they won't. So I already have an appointment. So my doctor sent in referral for the audiologist, the pulmonologist, the home health, and then a vascular person. He's like, why vascular? It's like, because I'm having issues with my veins. And this was like 7.30 in the morning. You could see them. I was like, that's not normal. It's like, normally they, I have to wear, you know, put heat on my hands to even have them to find a vein for an IV. I said, this isn't normal. I said, plus the other day, it literally felt like something was stuck. And the veins themselves were swollen. And I said, I had that happen not long ago on my knee. And the same thing happened. So so I have an appointment Monday with the audiologist. I have an appointment Tuesday with the vascular specialist. I have an appointment Wednesday with my endocrinologist. I am waiting to hear back from home health and the um, pulmonologist he's like you realize to do home health care you have to be homebound and I said I am I am and that's when we got on to the conversation of me not ever being able to drive again so it's like I need somebody who can come to me and see what see what needs to happen it'll be interesting to see if it was my my last physical therapist because I think he left to be a realtor I don't know he was doing some MLM and tried to I'm going to send you information. Okay. Okay. You can send me some information. That's fine. But okay. I'm not interested in MLM. So, yeah. That's that's where we're at. That's where we're at. That's what's going on. I am exhausted. I've taken a shower every fucking day this week. But this morning, I was just like, oh, my arms are so tired. He's like, I know. I know. He's like, this is it for a couple of days. And I hate that I have, like, I have three appointments next week. I have two. Well, the one thing that did happen is he got me out of jury duty. He said, 
I said that my issue is that, you know, trying to find, I was like, he has to take the day off so he can go with me. And he's like, let me just write you a letter to get you out for, for, for forever. And I was like, thank you very much. So I sent them in. We'll see what they say. But the way the courthouse is set up, it's like, it feels like two blocks from the handicap parking to the, um, the front steps of the courthouse and the courthouse is not, it's not very handicap accessible. I mean, it is, but it's just not very handicap accessible. So that was a load off. Plus I was scheduled for that. And then like, I have to start, I had to start the prep for my colonoscopy like later that day. And I was like, how am I going to handle all of this? I do not know. So yeah. That's where we're at. And I meant to weigh this morning and I didn't. And this video was supposed to be my intentions video and I'm just not in the right headspace for that right now. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna do them. It just means I'm just not in the right headspace right now. I just feel defeated. And again, it's the finality of it all. There's just this, the, the despair has sunk in and replaced any amount of hope I had left. And again, I know that I need to find the good in this, but I think I have to grieve first. And that's just really what I have to do. So you guys will have to let me know if you would be interested in my rambling thoughts at the kitchen table. <laughs> I've gone back and forth on posting it because on one hand, it's like, yes, it's raw, it's emotions, it's in the moment. But at the same time, it's raw, it's emotional, it's in the moment. And I, like, I want to share my journey because I want you guys to have someone that you can connect with. That's not you know, 130 pounds and trying to do keto and, you know, all blah, blah, blah. like I want to be not a role model, but like a source of like comfort or source of validation or something like that. But I also don't want to cause distress or cause stress, you know, and it's <sighs> chronic illness and chronic pain, man, it is the most isolating, shame-inducing bunch of bullshit <laughs> ever. And I just want to be heard. That's what I told her last night. I just want to be heard. So I told the MDA Care Center person today, I just want to be heard. I just want people to listen to me. And I told my pain management doctor, I was like, I really want to be petty. I wanted to be, be petty in that message and be like, oh, look, I was right and you were wrong. What I did, I just said, this is to go to whatever her name is. And left it at that. She was like, 2024 is almost here. You just got 31 days. And I'm like, I'm ready. I said, I know it's just a date, a date. But I said, I, she's like, no, you're ready to wipe this. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to wipe the slate clean. I'm ready to have a much better year in 2024. That is my sincere hope to alleviate some stress off me, to alleviate some stress off Rob and just. Settle in to this new normal. Settle, like not, I don't know. Not, I, I, I don't know that appreciate is the right word, but just to settle in and take a breath. Take a breath. I mean, I've been pushing, pushing, pushing since that phone call in December of 2021. And you know, luckily I have a therapist who can help me work through that trauma and the trauma that is happening right now. I was like, I don't understand why it's such a big deal for me to just switch providers. Like, what the fuck? 
it's not like I'm asking for money. It's not like I'm, you know, threatening to sue. It's not like I'm putting them on blast. I just want the ability to switch doctors. I said, I just want to talk to a doctor who will listen. That's it. And I told her, I was like, I don't even have to see them every six months or whatever. I can see them one time, you know, and just go from there. And I just don't understand why it's such a big deal. And yeah, my my chart may be wrapped up in a pretty red bow, but that isn't what they said to me. And three of them out of, well, actually four of them, the one that did the testing on my forehead basically said there's nothing. So four of them basically made me feel like there was nothing. Then you got the one at Texas Neurology, and then you got the most recent one. So six neurologists <laughs> in the last two years have basically told me there's nothing wrong with me. And I don't want to make it to seem like chronic fatigue syndrome and fibro aren't valid disorders. I'm not trying to say that at all. I just know that it's not mine. You know what I mean? Like I knew, I knew. When she said chronic fatigue, I was like, oh God. I don't even have any of those symptoms. Like, no. You don't get to do that to me anymore. So, yeah. Anyway. That's it. Welcome to my messy craft room. I haven't... I haven't had the desire to do anything. I mean, one win is that I didn't go off plan last night and I fucking wanted to I started a card at Chili's I started a card at Golden Chick I started a card at Jack in the Box <laughs> Rob's like where do you want I was like I don't know I'm trying to decide and then I finally said you know I just I said I'm not going to I said I'll just you know I'm not going to so I don't remember what he ate but I had prosciutto with Roxy and just, he's like, I'm proud of you. I was like, I'm proud of me too. I said, because I sure shit wanted to bury my face in some food. So, yeah. So, anyway, that's it. I'm just basically talking in circles. Thank you for listening. <sighs> if I haven't learned anything else, from this experience, it's that you have to advocate for yourself. And my doctor said that yesterday. He's like, you know, doctors, we no longer have time to advocate. He's like, I do. He's like, I'm sorry, I haven't been helpful. I said, yes, you have been. I said, you've been with me every step of the way. I said, you never made it seem like this was in my head. I said, you know, he's like, I'm just not trained. I said, I get that. I do. I said, but every time, I, like, like like today, I came to you with a list of people I needed to see and you immediately put the referrals in. I said, you trust me. I trust you. I said, you have been very helpful. I said, if you remember in 2017, I was basically seeing you every two weeks. Like, okay, where are we going next? And you kept pushing and pushing and pushing with me. I said, yeah, you don't know anything about this now. I said, but I know you're going to go research it. And I know that the next time I see you, which is next month, I said, you'll have a better grasp on it. And I said, I want to keep that appointment. He's like, no, I already told them to keep it. I said, because, you know, I have the other test results coming. <laughs> Who the fuck? Who the fuck knows what's happening with that? And that's going to be a whole other can of worms. It's like. I almost wish I told her to cancel it. But we're on a fact-finding mission and I need to know all the facts. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Like, this is real life, right? It's not always rainbows and glitter bombs and just hunky doriness It's... It can be frustrating and it can be exhausting and it can be just so goddamn depressing. I really miss April. I really do. This new therapist I think will be okay, but I really miss April.
So hopefully I'll be back next week with my December intentions and my word. I think I'm going to change. I don't think I'm going to do consistency. Like I, I don't know what I need. I feel like I need a better word. Excuse me. I'm so tired, Rob. Um, I guess he said he got up to go to the bathroom at like one. And when he doesn't fall asleep deep, he snores. And I, and I just kind of ruffle the covers. I try, I try not to say his name anymore because the last time I did that, he woke right up and couldn't go back to sleep. So I'll kind of ruffle the covers to get him to turn around. Because he's snoring. It doesn't matter if he's on his side, on his back. Well, he doesn't sleep on his back. On his side or on his stomach, he will snore if he's not like deep. And maybe that's true for everybody. I don't know. So like it was probably 2.30 until my alarm went off at 6.45 that he was just snoring and I was up almost the entire time. But I didn't want to bother him and get out of bed because, you know, he has to work today. He had to take me this morning. He has to work today. And probably has to work late because we didn't get home till almost 9.30 and his day starts at 8. And that appointment's about a mile from here. Maybe two. I'm gonna go get my nails done until he gets paid again on the 15th. Anyway, okay, okay. I've said it four times. I'm gonna go. Thank you for listening. If you have any words of wisdom, feel free to share. <sighs> Send out some good juju that that someone will take me, take on my case. Someone will want to treat me or talk to me, any of it. 